Today we are going to talk a little bit about how you can set up your radio in one of the most famous contesting software packages out there, N1MM, and configure it to key your radio with CW. I have an FT-101MP, or FTDX-101MP, uh, Yezu, and I'm going to show you a couple of things that you might need to consider when you get everything set up, because I know we're talking a lot about CW on this channel, and I think as you start to want to get into maybe contesting or have some automation associated with CW, uh, you're going to want to have some of this keying set up. So what we're going to do is I'm going to bring over N1MM, and this is really the main screen of N1MM. It probably looks something like this, something similar. You might have a couple of other screens that you'll see, like um, like the log screen or the telnet screen or something like that. You'll, you'll probably see something like this. I'm just going to keep these off the screen just for simplicity reasons, and I'm going to I'm going to show you some of the things that you need to do. So I'm also assuming that you have already connected your Yezu 101 MP to your computer via the USB cable. And what that is going to do, it's going to provide us with a couple of things called COM ports. And I should probably do a video on what that means and some of the history behind why we're using COM ports in ham radio and not just, you know, some kind of a straight up USB interface. But when you do plug in your Yezu, you're going to get two additional COM ports and they will look something similar to this. You're going to see one that says enhanced and you're going to see one that says standard. And you'll see that the standard one is uh, COM11 for me and the enhanced one is COM10. The one thing you also want to do when you set up CW Keen, you probably want to have your uh, computer control with your radio too. So all of the computer control um, and uh, com the commands that go to the radio happen over this enhanced COM port. So this is COM10. So that's going to be how I will know what frequency the radio is on, what mode it's on, etc. This standard COM port is what we're going to use for just kind of rudimentary keying. And I'll show you that in just a minute as we get things set up. Now, N1MM uh, the configuration here is under, uh, wow, the config menu, of course. So when we click the config menu, the very first option here is configure ports, mode control, win key, etc. So the thing that we care about is configuring ports. So I'm just going to click on that. And it's going to come up with this screen right here. And you're going to see that there are a bunch of, you know, sub menus here, these little tabs that uh, you can do different things with. We're going to ignore those for this exercise. Um, I will make a couple of other videos on how to use uh, something called WinKey, but that is beyond the scope of what we're going to do today. So the first thing I like to do is I like to have this, this first line set up with my rig control. And as we saw in my device manager, uh, this enhanced COM port, that is COM10. So I'm going to make this COM10 and I'm going to find my radio, which is the FTDX101D, which is exactly the same as the FTDX101MP. It's just 200 watts. I'm going to hit this set button here. And I'll accept all of these defaults. It's uh, 38400 is what the speed is. And you can kind of see suggested Yezu settings down here. Um, I've typically kept this to always off and that one to always off. Uh, they, they suggest it to be handshake which you can do and pretty much everything else I just leave the way it is and then when we hit OK and then hit OK we will now see that uh, I actually have some kind of a frequency here and as, as I rotate the VFO knob you'll see the frequency is changing this also translates to a couple of other things like it can tell whether it's on CW mode or not like for example I'm actually in a CW contest mode right now. I think I've got the CW Ops contest loaded 
and it knows that it's only CW, so there's not going to be a sideband option. So when I do click sideband on my radio, you'll see up here, it says contest mode CW, like it's giving you an exclamation point, like, uh oh, something's not right and you need to fix it. So I'll put my radio back in CW mode and you'll see that everything is kind of back to normal. I've got VFOA, I have a, a frequency readout and it also changes, you know, if I wanted to go to like 15 meters, something like that, I'll go back down to 20. And you can also click on here to go to 15 meters and you can see maybe it's too small, but it, um, it changed the radio to 15 meters to be able to see that. So we've got rig control set up, but we're not able to key CW. Like, you know, for example, I want to, you know, call CQ or something like that and use the computer to send the CW. Well, what I need to do is, do you remember that um, other de uh, COM port and device manager, which is standard COM port, that's COM port 11? Let's configure that right now. So we'll go back into config, configure ports. And for the next line, let's configure COM 11 to do something. Now we usually leave the radio blank because we're just going to be concerned about CW keying. I'm going to check this box right here because we want this one to handle all of the CW stuff. And then I'm going to hit the set button. So when I hit the set button, this thing comes up and it's like, oh wow, all right, it looks like we have some things to do. And the only thing that we have to do is configure either this one or this one to be CW. So we can have the DTR pin for um, be our, CD, our CW pin. And this whole designation pin four, pin seven, that's something that I'll, I'll make a different video on what that means with the, when it comes to serial ports. Some of where this came from, because you know a lot of stuff that we do in ham radio is kind of archaic and comes, you know, it's probably, you know, 1980s technology. So I'm going to maybe do a, a totally different video on general CW keying, but trust me when I say, um, you know, choose one of these two. And depending on the one that you choose, you have you can only do one. Depending on the one that you choose is going to depend on some settings that you have in the Yaesu 101 MP or the 101 D. So let's take a look at our 101. If we go to function and we hit CW settings, we have a, a couple of menus here, and I'm not sure if this is a you know truly blurry or um, I need to kind of like change the resolution here, but the first one is mode CW. And let's see what options that we have on the right hand side here. As we scroll down, you're going to see eventually that there's going to be a spot that talks about PC keying. So I'm scrolled all the way down here. And the third one from the bottom says PC keying, and mine is set to RTS. You can change it to DTR, RTS. Or DAKY or turn it off. I have mine set to RTS. Doesn't really matter if you have it set to RTS or DTR. Just remember which one it is. And then when we go back to our screen, you'll see that, oh, yeah, doggone it. It actually needs to be RTS and not DTR because that's what my radio is set at. So when I make that setting and hit OK, should make sure that these are all good. So RTS is CW, BTR is off, and then all of this stuff we already checked line one that it is communicating with the radio with the frequency and all that stuff. Line two is strictly CW. Now, some folks might say, hey, you know, why, why can't I just like click this and then I can go into here and then I can change, you know, this to CW. For whatever reason, I've never been able to make that work, and it's always been you, you want to have a second specific and designated uh, line in N1MM for CW, and I'd recommend that. So COM10 is handling the communications of the radio, and COM11 is strictly 
CW. So when we hit OK, we should be able to see that, like for example, if I hit this button, I don't know if you can hear that or not, but it just sent, yeah, TU. And it actually keyed it up, which I did not want to do. Oh, I think I got the power all the way down. All right, good. So um, that's how you do it. Now, the, the other piece of the puzzle is making sure that you have the correct things in these spots. As you can, as you can see, F1 calls CQ, F2 is the exchange, F3 is just simply TU means thank you, F4 is my call sign. What you can do is you can click on any one of these and it'll right click on any one of those and it'll pull up this screen here. And you'll see that when you are running stations, meaning that you're, means you're calling CQ, these F keys will do these things. And what, what happens here is F1 is the designated F key. This is the label for the F key. So this is what we're going to see right here. And then this is what is the output of the F key. So I'm going to go CQ, CWT, K9, KJ. Super quick, super tight. This is the CWT contest, so I don't have a big long CW, uh, CQ on here. The second one here, for example, you'll see something EXCH, which you'll see EXCH. Um, you'll see this exclamation point, and there are special characters in N1MM. You'll, you'll probably want to pull up the manual to figure out what those are. But there are special characters and things within N1MM that will help streamline um, your messages. Sometimes, you know, I'd just rather just put what is the exchange, but I've been trying to... Use um, do things like the exclamation point is going to send whatever is in this box, which means the other person's call sign. And then the EXCH thing in, in these curly braces, or these curly brackets, that is going to be the exchange that you set up when you actually set up the, um, the uh, contests. So if we did something like uh, stanger, change your station data, it's going to pull up this right here. And let's see here, where's the exchange? Maybe it doesn't show it here. Yeah, it might not show it here. It, the exchange is what um, you pull up in your, when you actually build the contest. One thing to keep in mind is um, there are two modes of operating here. You have the run mode, which means that you're calling CQ, and then the S&P mode, which means that you're you know searching and pouncing. And the cool thing about N1MM, or maybe the confusing part of N1MM, is that it will change these F keys depending on what mode you're running in. So if you're running in search and pounce mode, you're going to have, um, you know, you're not really going to call CQ when that happens. So this is kind of like a useless F key, but <clears throat> your exchange is going to be a little bit different. Let's see what that looks like. So in, in run mode, I'm calling CQ. Uh, somebody calls me, I, I will respond with their call sign in the exchange. And then once everything's done, I'm going to say, thank you, QRZ, K9, KJ. So those are my F1, 2, and 3. I use them in sequence when I'm calling CQ. But when I am searching and pouncing, obviously I'm not going to use F1 ever. But when I tune up on a station like um, Alpha Alpha Zero Zulu, and he's calling CQ, what I'm going to do is punch F4 to drop my call sign in there. So Kyle, AA0Z, is going to respond with, you know, K9KJ, you're 5, 9, blah, blah, blah. And then what I'm going to do is respond with my exchange, which is your 5, 9, whatever. And then he's going to say, thank you, QRZ. So basically, I'm using an F4 and an F2. I could switch these around so I can kind of like make it a little bit easier. So I'm, you know, making F2 and F3 my two sequential keys. I'll do F2 to call them and then F3 to, um, you know, do the exchange. But I kind of liked lining these up so that when I'm on run mode or S&P mode, they're generally the same. F2 is the exchange. F3 is thank you, and F4 is my call sign in 
each one of them. Of course, my exchange when I'm running is a little bit different than my exchange when I'm doing search and pounce. So um, usually, uh, or at least in the CWT, uh, we'll just kind of fire back the exchange. You do not send the other person's call sign. So this is another secret area you want to make sure that you have uh, set. So then you should be all set for uh, doing C, CW. So that's the, uh, that's the game plan for using N1MM and CW Keen, and that's how you do it with the Yezu 101 MP. I'll have some other videos out there. Uh, I plan on doing the uh, Millicraft K3S just to kind of show you how that looks, what that looks like. Um, also, any of the ICOM radios, ICOM 7300, I have a 7600. I'll uh, do a demonstration of that. And then also the Flex radio. So Flex is a little bit different, and I have a Flex uh, 6600. We'll uh, see what that looks like and what that configuration, uh, will, you know, how, how to enable that. So I'm hoping that this will be helpful for you to kind of help automate some of your, you know, fun when you're doing CW, um, doing contests, maybe in, even POTA. And if you're using a different piece of software outside of N1MM, you know, the principles are still the same. You're going to have two COM ports. Uh, hopefully you can set up. Um, you know, different COM ports in some of these different software packages to A, do the enhanced COM port, which is going to be the communications to the radio, and then B, the standard COM port, which is going to handle the CW key. And like I said, I'm going to make a different video. It'll probably be a shorter video with maybe a couple of little uh, crummy graphics I'm going to steal off the internet and um, show you kind of where this all came from, why we use COM ports, why we use this RTS and um, you know, DTR function, where that came, where that came from, why do we even care? Um, you know, especially in this day and age of USB connected devices, we are still using kind of archaic methods of connecting to the radio and doing things with our radio. It's kind of how it is. I think there's some backwards compatibility ideas behind that, but um, either way, that's kind of what we've got. And, um, you know, maybe giving you a, a little bit of background on how some of this came to be will help you and not be frustrated in um, you know, configuring radios and getting N1MM or any one of the other software packages out there to help key your radio for you. So, all right, CW on my friends, 73, and um, have a great time with Morse code.